All right, here we go with some uh, instructions of how to make this uh, piece right here on Mastercam. We're going to machine out the, uh, the sides of it. Close my email so they stop popping up. Sorry about that. All right. So the first thing you got to do is kind of orient your your part, and then you got to give it some stock setup. So what we do here, if I can get my master cam to show up, we got to go up here, master cam. We're going to pick plane manager, and right here you're telling it which plane is facing up towards the cutting tool. Um, now master cam top would work. Another option would be to hit geometry, pick any of these faces that will be up towards the cutter. We're going to pick this face. We're going to give that plane a name. I'll call it machine view or something like that okay now you'll notice there's a check mark up here that means uh, that's what we're going to use for programming we don't want to use that we want to use this guy so make sure mat machine view is picked hit equals okay jumps the arrow the check mark down to here calls this WCS which means that's what we're going to be machining my next thing is origin right now you can see my origins in the middle good luck finding that on a piece of metal so what we do is click the arrow and you're going to locate the origin we're going to pick this corner right here when you hit OK, the origin moves, hit OK again, and you can see your origin's in the corner. The arrows indicate the positive direction, positive Z, positive Y, and positive X. Next job you have to do is tell Mastercam and the mill how big your piece of metal is. So that's under these properties right here, and you're going to hit Stock Setup. Now you have to make sure that your stock plane matches your machining plane. So click this, and we're going to pick Machine View, hit OK. Our next step is we need to put a box around to like roughly say how big our piece of metal is going to be. So I'm going to hit bounding box. Draws this big rectangular prism around my block. That's the minimum size necessary to make this guy. So I'll hit OK again. Hit OK and I have that. All right, some other things I can change in that stock setup if I open it up again. I can go to tool settings. I'm going to, for my default program number, I'm going to call this 1001 just because I don't know a lot of people use that. For Tool pass, we're going to assign our tool numbers sequentially. So that means when I pick this first one, it'll be one. Then the next next tool will be two. Next tool will be three. I'm going to have it warn me if there's any duplicates. And I'm going to use the tool settings for step, peck, and coolant. All right? I'm going to do some override of values. I want to set my own values. So I'm going to override them. I'm going to tell it the clearance, the retract, and the feed plane. Okay, we'll get to those later. Uh, the sequence number, that has to do with your G code. Um, it's going to give you lines of code and what do you want to start with and what do they do right here? It would start with number 100. The next one would be 110. That's too complicated. Let's start with 1.0 increments of 1.0. It's just simpler. Hit OK. So first thing we want to do is cut out these little wingalings. To do that, I'm going to pick a 2D tool path. It's 2D because once my tool goes to a certain depth, it moves around and doesn't have to wander up and down. I'm going to pick contour. A contour toolpath traces a line. All right? So here I'm going to pick which lines I want to trace. I want to trace this line, and I want to trace this line on the other side. Now hit chains. You'll see there's two chains. They are this line and this line. There's some arrows. So on chain number one, what these arrows mean, green is where the tool enters, red is where it comes out. So we start on this side, exit on this side. Chain number two is just the opposite. Enter on this side, exit on this side. What the small green arrow indicates is which side of the line my tool is offset to. So I'm offset on this side. The tool's over here cutting away. If I hit this button right here, it flips to the other side. That means my tool's going to be in here. That's not good at all. So flip that back. If I click this one, I reverse where they start. So I would enter here and exit here. But I don't like that, so switch it back. Hit OK. And now we have our programming for our contour. So let's go down to our tools right here. We're going to pick a tool. So hit select tool library. Now, you'll probably have to filter them. So hit filter. And if you hit all, you have every tool imaginable. If you hit none, there's no tools. So we hit none to clear it. Then we pick this tool. It's a flat end mill. Hit OK. And then we'll use any kind of tool material, high speed steel, carbide, whatever. Hit OK. Here's all our flat end mills. We are going to choose this one right here, the flat end mill, three quarter inch, because that's a nice big one. We use it in the Haas mills a lot. Hit OK. It loads it up. So uh, here's where you change your feed rate, inches per minute, spindle speed, and RPM. So this is how fast the tool spins. This is how fast the tool moves around. Plunge rate is how fast it goes down into the metal. 
retract rate is how fast it pulls up. Now you can look these up for your tools. You can guess, but there's a chart I have available for you guys and it recommends when machining aluminum with a high speed steel end mill, which is what we're using, to use this surface feet per minute. And your surface feet per minute can be anywhere from 200 to 600. Hey, we don't want to waste time, so I'm going to change this to 600. When I hit enter, you can see everything updates. My spindle speed is a little over 3,000. My feed rate is 27. For the plunge rate, I'm usually happy with a 10. We can adjust that. Always remember, bigger tools can plunge a little faster, but 10 is kind of a rough round number for us. And when we retract, there's no reason not to pull back quick, so we're going to hit rapid retract. That means when it's done, it's going to pull back quickly. I'm going to leave myself a comment. My comment is going to be uh, machine side angles so I know what's going on. My next step is to go to cut parameters. All right. So in cut parameters, I got to tell it kind of what the tool is doing. Now, uh, first thing I want to do is compensation type. These are kind of funky. If you did a coin already, we turned it off. And you can see it's a line. That's the line that you're tracing and a cutter to the side of it. If I turn it off, the cutter goes right down the middle of the line. We definitely don't want that. What we a lot of times do is run it on wear. And that means you can tell the machine that the tool is worn out a little bit. In our case, we're normally not too concerned with that. Uh, the rest of these, our compensation, our cutter was on the left-hand side. That's fine. Tip compensation means I'm going to machine with the tip of my tool. You would only change that if we were using a uh, like a drill bit. Some other things to look at here. You can leave material so you can come back and cut it later. If you're not planning on doing anything fancy, make sure all these are set to zero. That's really important. Okay, so now we're going to go to our next step which is depth of cuts. Uh, the tutorial has you at first, you don't do depth of cuts. What it means is my cutter is going to drop all the way down and cut the whole thing off. I can turn this on and tell it you're going to go a little bit down each time, but in this tutorial they don't want you doing that yet. So leave that turned off. Your next one here is lead in, lead out. It's a fancy way of saying instead of the tool just going bam into it at 90 degrees, it kind of like rolls into it and starts shaving. The reason we use this is it's easier on the tools, they last longer, and you get a nicer surface finish. And what we do is this curve as it enters is based on the diameter of your tool. And what we do is we have that curve set to 30% right here. And we do the same thing down here. Okay, so it enters 30% of the diameter away. So 30% of three quarter inch over here. And the radius for this curve is 30% of my tool. Um, you can play with it. It just changes this curve. We found 30% is pretty common. And instead of entering everything again, it has an exit. Like it exit, it kind of rolls out. It's also better for surface finish. You hit this arrow and it copies it. So everything's the same over there. All right. Um, lead in, lead out is not 100% necessary. But it does make your tools last longer. And again, it makes your, your stuff come out nicer. Better surface finish. Now, breakthrough, you can see the little graphic here. Do you want your tool to stick out the bottom? We don't want that, so leave it off. Uh, Multi-passes, we're actually going to come back and adjust that later. So leave it turned off for now. The tabs, we never really adjust those, so don't mess with them. Next, you linking parameters. This is where you're going to enter how deep does the tool cut. So these are incredibly important values. So the first thing is our clearance. If you look at clearance is like how high the tool is when it's moving way around. So we're going to turn that on just for fun. And we're going to leave it at two inches. It's going to be set to absolute. Absolute means relative to the origin. So our clearance height is two inches above the origin. Our next one is retract. Our retract is going to be 0.25 inches. So this is fine. We're going to call it absolute. So what happens is it moves quick. It goes above to where it's going to start, and then it drops down to this height, which is a quarter inch above the origin. Our next plane is our feed plane. This is where it starts to slow down, and we're going to change our feed plane to absolute, and we're going to change that to 0.1. Okay, so at 0.1 inches above the metal, it'll feed at a specific speed. Where's our top of stock? Our top of stock is absolute zero, because remember our origin was on the top here. And how deep do we want to go? 
this is where we change it. We could go absolute, but we have to tell it how deep this is. Instead, I'm going to say incremental, and I'm going to leave it at zero. So it's going to go down to the line we chose, and that's going to be zero. Going to go all the way down to there, all right? Oh, whoops, I changed this one to it's from incremental to absolute. That should say it absolute. Sorry, two zeros threw me off. So absolute zero for top, top of stock, incremental zero for depth, all right? That's got you pretty darn close. The last thing you might want to do is go down here to coolant, and we turn our flood coolant on. We like a lot of coolant on our stuff. Um, everything lasts longer, those sorts of things. So you're done programming for now. Hit OK. All right, now you can see some lines. L yellow lines are rapid. Blue lines are where it's cutting. This would be a good time to save if you haven't done so. Now, if you want to do a simulation, it is... This guy, Verify Selected Operations. When you click that, new screen loads up. Looks like so. Hit the play button. Okay, it just shows you, it, it went really fast, but it cuts things off. Here's your problem. You left some wingalings on there. And that's because it just went one pass. Boom, boom, out there you got wingalings. So you got to adjust that. So go ahead and close that. Now you got to adjust that. And remember how we left that one button that said multi passes that's what we're going to modify because you can't just cut it in one one swoop with our uh with our three quarter inch tool it just doesn't work out right so go to parameters go down here to multi passes we're going to turn them on okay and here's what we're going to do for settings we are going to have three rough passes so that means we're going to take big cuts and our spacing is going to be 0.35 so it's going to cut 0.35, move over, cut 0.35, move over, cut 0.35, move over. All right? Next, we're going to do a finish pass. That way it looks nice. We're going to do one. And our finish pass, the spacing, is going to be 0.05. Okay? Uh, the rest of the stuff, um, you can override the feed rate for finish. We're not going to do that. Um, you could have a finish pass only at final depth. That's a little more advanced, so we'll, ha we'll deal with that later. Hit OK. Now, you can see there's a red X here. That means you have a dirty operation. To fix that, see this right here? Regenerate all selected operations. That would work. Or, regenerate dirty operations. So, click that. And you can see it's no longer dirty. And you can see there's multiple lines. That means it's going to cut it. Cut it once, twice, multiple times. So, if you want to preview that, you hit verify right here. Okay, it loads up. And then hit play. You can see it shaves off the sides, right? It's better on the tool, comes out nice. So that is actually what we want. All right, so that's pretty good. Now, um, some other things we could change on that is it does it in one pass. And I'm not a big fan of cutting that thing in one pass. Um, that is just, you know, that's a lot of depth. So what you could also do here is go to your parameters, change depth cuts right here turn those on how deep do you want the cutter to go each time i don't know 0.375 that's that's pretty deep you ain't messing around let's change it to 0.25 and then uh we could have a finish cut we can do one finish cut and we want to leave uh i don't know let's put it 0.050 okay hit okay you're now dirty again that's what that red x means regenerate and you can see there's a lot more cuts here. Okay, This is more realistic of how you would cut apart. All right? So verify that guy again. When you hit play, you can see it works its way down. That's what we want. That's how we would actually machine it. All right? So once you see that happen, you're done. Uh, save this thing. When you turn it into me, screenshot this so I can see all these tool paths. And that's how I know you did it right. Uh, when we do some other parts that are similar to this, you're going to do the same thing. But what we're going to mess with is the parameters for your step over.